Welcome to Wednesday's edition of Renew Plus. I'm Pastor Tony. Thank you for joining us here at midweek of our final week, week number 10 of our rest area we've entitled Just As If Sin Never Existed. Last week and this week so far, we've been talking about believing God, believing just as if sin never existed in our life. Most of our believing has been geared toward men and what men can do, or many times we're thinking what God can do through other men. But God is not limited to other men. You understand that. But because of sin, because of the fall of man, it was kind of rooted on the inside of all of us, that sense of inferiority, that sense of unworthiness, that sense of sin and guilt and shame, which produced in our own minds and hearts that separation away from God. And even when we're born again, even when we came over into being uh, believing in Jesus, being born again, and of course we know from scriptures our sins have been washed away like they never existed before. But until we allow those realities of the new covenant, of the finished work of Jesus, get down the inside of our heart and uproot that sin consciousness and uproot that sense of inferiority, condemnation, guilt and shame in our life, we're always going to still have that kind of thought or belief that we're separated away from God. And I can tell you that is not true. God is now that the walls have been taken out. Sin has been abolished. God is not looking at you as a sinner. He's not looking at you in, in your sin. He is looking at you in Christ. He's looking at you through the blood of Jesus. And he sees somebody who is free from sin like sin never existed. He no longer remembers our sin. See, we're the ones that are remembering and recalling our sin until we allow the new covenant realities to get in and renew our minds, to change our thought patterns and our mindsets. And I can tell you, it's a paradigm shift. That's the modern day phrase for this, but this is a paradigm shift from the way we used to think and believe and our perspective to the way we should be believing and our perspective today in the new covenant. Because sin has been abolished and done away with, we need to have that constant awareness of God in our life. That's what I was talking about at the end of yesterday. Part of our prayer life is just walking with God, being in constant fellowship and communion with Him, where I know that God is always with me. He is always for me. He is not just with me and for me. He lives in me. He lives in my house, so to speak. So I don't have to go looking for God when I have a problem. He's always there. Whether I feel His presence or not, whether I sense it, where I see it, whether I have goosebumps or not, I always have to know that God is always with me. And see, that is a big part of our prayer life. Now, I want to look at some, uh, a good example of this today and probably tomorrow, an example of unbelief and how it got in there. Because really, the problem is not that we can't believe or we don't have enough faith. The real problem is we have an abundance of unbelief and doubts up here that are just separating or just suppressing that uh, purity of faith that would move mountains and believe for the impossible in our life. But one of the greatest examples that the Bible uses, both Old Testament and New Testament, is the children of Israel. The children of Israel I'm talking about are the ones who were in bondage in Egypt. And of course, we know the story of the, uh, Moses, and we've probably seen the, you know, the movie, The Ten Commandments. That's kind of a, a rough <laughs> you know, uh, storyline of really what happened there. But it, it gives you the basic line. But we're familiar with that, of how the children of Israel were led out of the bondage of Egypt because of God, because of what he did. He did that for them. They didn't, he didn't give them some kind of arsenal, nuclear weapon technology before the time that, you know, caused them to be able to overcome Pharaoh and his army. No, God did that by his strong hand of, of salvation and redemption and through Moses and uh, through the rod of Moses. But, you know, when we're talking about right there, they were supposed to go from the promise or, or from the bondage of Egypt right through the wilderness and right on into the promised land. God had already promised 
uh, Abraham in the Abrahamic covenant with an oath, a sworn oath that God would give his descendants after him that land over there. So they were supposed to go right through that wilderness, which is roughly in a, uh, probably an 11 day, maybe a two week journey from uh, the Red Sea all the way to the promised land. They were supposed to go through the wilderness, not wander around there for 40 something years. And they were supposed to go in and possess their promised land. Now, when God made that promise to Abraham, and of course it was passed on to Abraham's seed through that covenant, then God was going to perform that. Remember, Abraham believed God and became fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. Well, God didn't intend for them to go in and dispossess those giants and those great uh, armies over there and overcome the obstacles in the wall cities that were present there in that promised land. He didn't intend for them to overcome that by themselves. And see, they were looking at with men and they got into an area of unbelief. They got into an area where they could not go in and possess their promised land that God had already given to them because they were not figuring God into the equation at all. They were not factoring God and they were not considering God. They were not focused on him at all. They were just looking at themselves and what they could do. And see, they began to compare themselves. In fact, they, they sent 12 spies into that, uh, into that promised land 10 of them came back with a, what the Bible says, an evil report of unbelief here in Hebrews chapter 3. We'll go over there in just a minute. But Hebrews chapter 3 said it was an evil report of unbelief that they brought back to the children of Israel. And they really contradicted what God said. And they said, you know, it, it, it is a land flowing with milk and honey. God was, he was telling the truth there, but there's wall cities there. There's giants there and we cannot overcome it. We, there's no way for us to go in there and dispossess those land or, or those people and possess that promised land that God has given to us. So in other words, God was basically dealing with them with half truths according to those 10 spies. And, and that just discouraged all the heart of those people. And they went into an area of unbelief. They were moved by what they saw because they were not seeing God in that city. They were not conscious and aware that God was with them, that he would go before them and fight the battles and he would take care of a business for them. There were two spies that did come back with a good report, Joshua and Caleb. And they came back with a report that said, we're well able to go in. Let's go up at once and take possession of that land for we're well able to overcome it. Those, those people in there, those giants and all, they are, they are our bread. In other words, we're going to eat their lunch and pop the bag. And I tell you what, we'll go in and take that land at once. Let's go in now. See, that's the spirit of faith talking. The spirit of faith is only going to be present when we start factoring God into the situation. As long as we see ourselves separated away from God, we're going to be looking at, at ourselves naturally. We're going to be looking at natural things and comparing ourselves with the problem rather than considering God in the promise. And I tell you, that is going to lead us into a place of unbelief that's going to negate any faith. And it's going to cause a fence to be built around us of possibility where we are not going to cross it. And, and the enemy is going to keep you in that corral uh, as long as he can, I can tell you. Now, why couldn't those children of Israel, those people that God had promised that land, God's ever intent was to, for them to go in and possess that land. Why couldn't they enter in and possess their land? Well, Hebrews chapter three tells us that, gives us a commentary and tells us exactly why they couldn't get in. So in verse uh, number 19, we're just gonna have time for one verse here. Hebrews 3.19, it said, So we see that they, talking about the children of Israel, could not enter in because of unbelief. Because of unbelief. Now, where did the unbelief come from? What was it rooted in? It was rooted in they were just seeing themselves by themselves trying to go in and overcome those obstacles that were just too big for them, that were, that were impossible with them naturally. And that caused an unbelief to happen that kept them out. It wasn't really the giants. It wasn't the wall cities. It wasn't the challenges and the obstacles that were just too big. It was their own unbelief 
that kept them out of their promised land that God had provided for them. And I can tell you that is a large part of why that even the children of God are not walking in the blessing today. They're not walking in God's favor. They're not walking in victory. They're not, they're not experiencing the good life to any great degree, not, not receiving and experiencing answered prayer on a positive note because of their unbelief has nothing to do with the willingness of God has nothing to do with the giving in has everything to do with the receiving in and their unbelief is just keeping them out because they're not considering God they're not considering the love of God they're not considering the grace of God factored into this situation right here now were they deserving of it no they complained the whole way out there they were murmuring complaining against God the whole way out there they were in sin just like everybody else. So we're not talking about deserving. God promised it to Abraham because of his grace and unconditional love. But because they didn't see that, they saw that they were going to have to go in there and try to possess it on their own. And they failed because of unbelief. Now, let's look over to the Old Testament, to the book of Numbers real quick. And let's look at a couple of scriptures that really have that tie in with this right here that show us where this unbelief came from. Now, notice here in Numbers chapter 13, and um, uh, where we want to pick up. Let's, let's start with uh, verse number 31. It said, But the men who had gone up with, with him said, We are not able to go, uh, to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. I want you to see that. This is part of those ten spies and the report that they brought back that was unbelief. They said, those people in there, there, we are not. We, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Now, where's God in this equation? Why, why didn't we see God effect, factored in in their perspective here? Well, he wasn't. That's why they were in unbelief. They were talking about we doing this, and they're stronger than we. See, if you look at, everybody's familiar with the story of David and Goliath. If you look at that story real, real close right there, David wasn't some kind of superman, and he wasn't some kind of big giant that could face off with another giant. In fact, David was probably short by today's standards for the most part. But uh, that has nothing to do with it. You know how big and strong and muscular you are, how much you've been working out naturally, how tall you are, have nothing to do with it is who's with you that has everything to do with your faith and your receiving from God and believing for the impossible. But David went out there with a whole different perspective. All the armies of Israel were hiding behind the rocks every time that Goliath came out. He came out, you know, morning and evening, and he threatened and challenged somebody from the armies of Israel to come out and fight with him and defeat him. And, of course, he made a, you know, made a, a promise to them that if somebody over there could defeat him, then all the Philistines would go in there and they would serve as Israel's slaves. But, you know, they were all hiding behind the rocks in fear and in unbelief because of this. They were comparing the giant Goliath, which was their problem, with themselves. And they saw themselves not adequate, not sufficient in and of themselves to overcome that giant Goliath. David came to the battle one day to bring some lunch for his brothers out there in the battle. Actually, they were hiding behind the rocks. And uh, he brought some lunch to them. And he heard, overheard Goliath say what he said. That every day he went through the same road, challenging and all this kind of stuff. But it wasn't that David heard something different or saw something different. It's the way he heard it and how he saw it. His perspective was different. Because out there in the sheep fields, when he was tending the sheep, you know, he didn't see himself out there in the in that you know, in the fields out there all alone. He was in constant communication with God. He was constantly aware of God being for him and with him in every situation. In fact, he had already taken out a lion and a bear who came into the fold and you know stole one of the lambs out. He chased it down and didn't grab it by the tail. He grabbed it by the beard and smote it. So we see what kind of we see what kind of spirit of faith that David had. Now, what gave him that boldness and that confidence, that spirit of faith that we're talking about right there? Because of his perspective. 
He didn't see himself without God. He saw himself with God. He saw God with him in the Abrahamic covenant. In fact, he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He didn't even refer to him as a giant. He says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? In other words, he don't have a covenant with God. God's not with him. He's with me. He said, I'm going to go out there and take that. So David hastened to the battle. Of course, we know the story how he took Goliath down. How could he do that? Because he saw God with him. Whole different perspective. That's what calls their unbelief. They didn't see themselves with God and God with them. In fact, it goes on to say there in uh, verse number 33, there we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. Well, how do they know that? Did they ask them? Probably not, but they compared themselves among all those giants, and they saw themselves as grasshoppers in their own sight. You know why? Because they didn't factor God in there. They were comparing themselves with the giants just like the armies of Israel going up against Goliath, but like David and Joshua and Caleb, who had came back with a good report, a report of faith and belief, they compared the giants with God. And I tell you, that whittled those giants down to a nothing because they saw God on their side. And that's what gives us a spirit of faith. And that's what causes us to get rid of unbelief. We know we're not separated away from God any longer. Well, that's, I've got to stop right there. I went over a little bit today. If you'd like additional materials, go to TonyCowan.org and we will see you tomorrow.